well as success. You think of physical history as beginning with the caveman and continuing up to the present, but there have been other great scientific civilizations, some spoken of in legend, some completely unknown, all in your terms now vanished. It seems to you that you have, perhaps, but one chance as a species to solve your problems or be destroyed by your own aggression, by your own lack of understanding and spirituality. But as you are given many lives in which to develop and fulfill your abilities, so has the species in those terms been allotted more than the single line of historical development with which you are presently acquainted. Groups of people in various cycles of reincarnational activity have met crisis after crisis, have come to your point of physical development and either gone beyond it or destroyed their particular civilization. In this case, they were given another chance, having the unconscious knowledge not only of their failure, but the reasons behind it. They then began with a psychological head start as they formed new primitive groupings. Others, solving the problems, left your physical planet for other points in the physical universe. When they reached that level of development, however, they were spiritually and psychically mature and were able to utilize energies of which you now have no practical knowledge. Earth, to them, now is the legendary home. They formed new races and species that could no longer physically accommodate themselves to your atmospheric conditions. However, they also continued on the reincarnational level as long as they inhabited physical reality. Some of these have mutated and have long left the reincarnational cycle, however. Those who left it have evolved into the mental entities that they always were, you see. They have discarded material form. This group of entities still takes a great interest in Earth. They lend its support and energy. In a way, they could be thought of now as Earth gods. On your planet, they were involved in three particular civilizations long before the time of Atlantis, when, in fact, your planet itself was in a somewhat different position, particularly in relationship to three of the other planets that you know. The poles were reversed, as they were, incidentally, for three long periods of your planet's history. These civilizations were highly technological, the second one being, in fact, far superior to your own along those lines. Sound was utilized far more effectively, not only for healing and in wars, but also to power vehicles of locomotion and to bring about the movement of physical matter. Sound was a conveyor of weight and mass. The strength of this second civilization lay mainly in the areas now known as Africa and Australia, although at that time not only was the climate entirely different, but the land areas. There was a different attraction of land mass having to do with the altered position of the poles. Relatively speaking, however, the civilization was concentrated in area. It did not attempt to expand. It was highly ingrown and dwelled upon the planet simultaneously with a large, unorganized, dispersed, primitive culture. Not only did it make no attempt to civilize the rest of the world, but it did everything in its power, which was considerable for a long period of time, to impede any such progress. The members of this civilization were largely a fringe group from the earlier successful civilization, most of whom had decided to continue existence in other areas of your physical universe. These, however, were particularly enamored of earthly life and also thought that they could improve upon the last experiment in which they had been involved, though they were free to move on to other layers of existence. They were not interested in beginning from scratch again as an infant civilization, but in other areas. Therefore, much of their knowledge was instinctive with them, and this particular group then went through what you would call the various technological stages very rapidly. They were particularly concerned in the beginning with developing a human being who would have built-in safeguards against violence. With them, the desire for peace was almost what you would call an instinct. This civilization, therefore, left the natives that surrounded them in peace. They did send out members of their own group, however, to live with the natives and intermarry, hoping peacefully to thus alter the physiology of the species. The energy, often in your time given over to violence, went instead into other pursuits, but began to turn against them. They were not learning to deal with violence or aggression. They were attempting to short-circuit it physically, and this, they found, had complications. The physical alteration was a strain on the entire system. The urge to act, which is the creative function and basis that has been distorted into the idea of aggression, 
was not understood. An overly conscientious, restrictive mental and physical state evolved, in which the organism's natural physical need for survival was in every way hampered. Mentally, the civilization progressed. Its technology was extremely activated and propelled onward as it strove to develop, for example, artificial foods so that it would not need to kill for survival in any way. At the same time, it tried to leave the environment intact. It missed your stage of automobiles completely and steam-driven vehicles and concentrated rather early on sound. The sound could not be heard by physical ears. The civilization was called Lumania, and the name itself went down in legend and was used again at a later time. The Lumanians were a very thin, weakly people, physically speaking, but psychically either brilliant or completely ungifted. In some, you see, the built-in controls caused so many blockages of energy in all directions that even their naturally high telepathic abilities suffered. They formed energy fields around their own civilization. They were, therefore, isolated from contact with other groups. They did not allow technology to destroy them, however. More and more of them realized that the experiment was not a success. Some, after physical death, left to join those from the previous successful civilization who had migrated to other planetary systems within the physical structure. Large groups, however, simply left their cities, destroyed the force fields that had enclosed them, and joined the many groups of relatively uncivilized people mating with them and bearing children. These Lumanians died quickly, for they could not bear violence nor react to it violently. If attacked, they had to flee. The fight-or-flight principle did not apply. The Lumanians' god symbol was a male one, a strong, physically powerful male figure who would therefore protect them since they could not protect themselves. He evolved through the ages, as their beliefs did, and into him they projected those qualities that they could not themselves express. He was much later to appear as the old Jehovah, the god of wrath who protected the chosen people. The fear of natural forces was, therefore, initially extremely strong in them, and brought about a feeling of separation between man and those natural forces that nurtured him. They could not trust the earth, since they were not allowed to protect themselves against violent forces within it. Their vast technology and their great civilization was largely underground. They were, in those terms, the original cavemen, and they came out from their cities through caves also. Caves were not just places of protection in which unskilled natives squatted. They were often doorways to and from the cities of the Lumanians. Long after the cities were deserted, the following natives, uncivilized, found these caves and the openings. In the period that you now think of as the Stone Age, the men you think of as your ancestors, the cavemen, often found shelter not in rough, naturally formed caves, but in mechanically created channels that reached behind them, and in the deserted cities in which once the Lumanians dwelled. Some of the tools fashioned by the cavemen were distorted versions of those they had found. I should perhaps mention here that some of the caves, particularly in certain areas of Spain and the Pyrenees, and some earlier ones in Africa, were artificial constructions. Now, these people moved mass with sound and actually conveyed matter through a high mastery of sound. This is how their tunnels were originally formed, and it was also the method used to form some of the caves in areas where originally there were few. Often, drawings on the cave walls were highly stylized information, almost like signs in your terms in front of public buildings, portraying the type of animals and beings in a given area. These drawings later were used as models by your early cavemen in the historical times to which you usually refer. The Lumanian civilization was the second and perhaps most interesting of the three civilizations. The first followed generally your own line of development and faced many of the problems that you now do. They were largely situated in what you call Asia Minor, but they were also expansive and traveled outward to other areas. These are the people I mentioned earlier who finally went on to other planets within other galaxies and from whom the people of the Lumanian civilization